Hi everyone, my name is Agnese and together with Charlotte and Peter I will be presenting the translation potential. So, um, the current way of monitoring vancomycin faces several problems. First, firstly, the right dose for treatment can only be calculated a few days after treatment has already started. Secondly, these results may be false positives, which could compromise the effectiveness of the cure. Moreover, drug monitoring can only um, be done in hospitals or specialized clinics. Uh, moreover, um, so we wanted our sensor to be quick, efficient and easy to use. Thanks to the lateral flow assay method, combined with our smartphone app, uh, waiting times are now reduced to a minimum. We are talking about a few seconds. Uh, furthermore, our method is very simple, as it requires minimal blood samples and can be used by outpatients without having to hospitalise them. So the application is easy to use and responds to the needs of the user, as you can see on the video. Um, the app can be further improved by adding it to both the Apple and the Android store. Uh, in terms of the membrane, we could uh, add a new membrane to separate the plasma to the blood samples, and hence by making the process even smoother. The main targets of our product are hospitals, patients and insurance companies. Hospitals would greatly benefit from a, a software-based biosensor, which would allow staff to access uh, the results almost immediately and with minimal training required. Uh, the patient themselves would um, be able to keep the sensors on their bedside table and access immediately their medical uh, results. We believe that everyone should be able to uh, be informed on their health status and what better way than uh, being able to access your medical data with a click. Finally, our biosensor could represent a bridge between insurance companies and hospitals where lowering the cost per patient uh, means increase, increasing the general profit. Thank you. And right. Fortunately, due to the ease of the simple de novo synthesis, it's possible to scale up the manufacturing of the membrane to an industrial scale. The synthesis of the gold nanoparticle complex involves simple reactions that occur at room temperature and use no chemicals that pose environmental or safety risks. Therefore, they are already safe to use on a big scale and the membranes themselves can be used and disposed of at home without risk. To alter the method to mass produce the membranes, we will use an inkjet printer to drop nanolitre spots of antibody and avidin on the membranes and then cut up the large membranes into smaller sheets using a laser cutter or a guillotine. The app itself is already fit to go on the app store and will be soon ready for download. The software-based design of the biosensor means that the production of big, bulky, expensive hardware is not necessary. Our prototype is very similar to the final product. Ideally, the membranes will be printed with the printer rather than by hand, but the design will remain exactly the same. They will come in a pack with instructions on how to use and a cartridge to hold the membrane and to deposit the blood sample where it's needed. The app will not need any major modifications before it hits the store, as new features can be installed with app updates. The majority of the profit for our business will come from the sale of the consumable membranes, which can currently be made for under 60p. We aim to sell them for around a pound, but this value can change depending on the cost to produce, but still gives us a large margin for profit. However, to reduce the cost for recurring patients that will use the biosensor a lot, we will sell the membranes in bulk for reduced costs. To sell the app, we aim to offer a license to hospitals, hospitals and clinics, um, which will then allow their patients to use the app once it's downloaded. The subscription also comes with reduced fees for the membranes and technical help. So we plan to distribute our platform based on the popular bait and hook, a razor and blade model. For those not familiar with this business model, the basic idea is that there is a base product which is sold cheaply and there is a refilling consumable which is more expensive. We would gain customers by getting them to subscribe to our software which would either be provided as, as a service or installed on site so that, that it's integrated with uh, healthcare providers already established systems. These solutions will be offered at a depressed price so that because its point is not really to make a profit but to bind our customers to exclusively using our membranes. The consumables, the membranes, 
will be dispatched in smaller batches so that production can keep up with demand. These recurring orders will also provide us with a cash flow that will enable the business to be self-sustaining shortly after release. The, the use of recurring orders is also useful because we can make our prices less dependent on market constraints and adjust them based on customer relationships and, of course, demand. I mean, we want to make a profit, but we don't want to scare our customers. There is still work to be done on the platform. Improving the machine vision system is key to making the measurements as fast, convenient and accurate as possible. Apart from this, we will need to implement the device plan for manufacturing the membranes. Thank you for listening, and we can't wait to answer your questions. So there are really two ways to go about this. One is is legal option. So we uh, we file it to, to for the membranes to be an IP, and say so that anyone who tries to sell the same membrane with the exact same functionality. Uh, in these legal options, there are there are there are loads of ways to to that to explore how to how to the how to really protect our IP. The other way. Is to is to make the membranes uh, with an extra extra implanting chip, like an NFC chip or or some pattern that can't be really be copied, or a barcode that is connected to our systems, so that when they scan it, it just if it's done with the barcode or the or the tag, it just won't work. The current measuring for vancomycin, um, the way they measure it is to get the concentration to be below the toxic concentration, which is a really unhealthy way of prescribing drugs because realistically you want the, low, the dose as low as possible to have a result without becoming toxic. In terms of false positives, that means they've got, a, as the dose of vancomycin is so high, they have a large chance of getting false positives because of the high dose. I, I'm unsure how frequently they come across false positives because the dosing, well, it's not really done so much in the UK, so we were measuring more so much the number of patients that do vancomycin. However, with our biosensor, it's very unlikely to get a false positive due to the two data point cor correlation to the vancomycin. Because we're over time. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. One round of applause for Imperial. Thank you very much.